Hi everybody. Today's video is going to be on the kind of next step after the simple mix video I did a little while ago. So what I'm going to go through today is I'm literally going to mix my normal mix, um, but I'm also going to talk about why I make those adaptions and kind of why I do more variety, more enrichment and some of the options that you might have. I will say with this, um, you don't need to go as far as me. Uh, you could go further. <laughs> it's very much a case of see what you enjoy see what the rats enjoy and see what suits them um, but this this will mainly be exploring some of the options that you can do to kind of mix things up a little bit and make them a bit more exciting um, so in order to do that i thought just before i put the camera on the stand and hopefully i will not turn the power off like i did about five minutes ago when i started for the first time um, i just show you the kind of the amount of ingredients i currently have out which will Probably all, they don't always all go into the mimics, but I suspect most of them will go in today. So let's do a bit of a zoom out. So you can see we've got several bags and boxes filled with ingredients along here. Um, I'll take you through each of them as we go along. And now let's see whether I can get this back in a stand without twitching the power off. Right, that looks promising. So first step first, I mix this in an Alaska base. So this is quite a large um, cage base. I have don't have that many mouths to feed on a normal basis. However, I've got some litters coming up, so I like to make it in batch because aside from the fact that babies eat you out of house at home, um, I also send a bit home with my pet, pet homes and it's part of their kitten packs. So I get through it basically this time of year. So you probably recognize this. I believe this is probably the scoop that I used for the last mix. Um, it's a while ago now, I have a short memory, but yes, I'll be using this as my standard scoop. There are some differences in this mix though. So I have tried to print it out here. Um, the joys of doing forward facing camera means this is written backwards, so I can't really read it, but hopefully you can. Um, I don't know how close it is. I'll try zooming in. Um, you probably laugh if you saw the equipment that I have to do this. <laughs> but yeah, so this is gonna go through the main things. So the important thing to know about my mix is it's in two parts. So these are both actually legitimate diet options on their own. Each half creates a complete mix in its own right. Um, I do this because partly because it gives it for variety and partly because it reduces the amount of supplements I need to feed. And I will explain a little bit about that later. So why would why do I mix things up? Why do I add more variety? So for me, variety has two main elements to it. Um, one part of variety is the enrichment value. So rats do generally enjoy a wide choice of things, a bit like us. They are um, kind of naturally omnivorous and they are scavengers by nature. They will go around and they will find interesting things to eat. They're not like your kind of herbivores, like um, kind of some of the rabbits and that kind of thing, and keep cows, etc. They don't eat a kind of very staple, boring diet. In nature they eat a varied diet which is partly why we feed mixes and why when we feed a really nice varied mix it's even more exciting for them they can find interesting bits um, different flavors and so on um, that's that's one of the reasons the other reason is in variety um, and you do have to be careful about what variety you use for this and apply a little bit of common sense you help cover some of the areas that a diet will be naturally weak in so if I use let's say even just three different types of rabbit and similar commercial mixes which is actually one half of my diet um i'm introducing different weaknesses but also different strengths and i'm actually covering various bits and pieces when i use five six seven different grains in a mix i'm also covering some of their weaknesses for instance corn's very low in protein and fat which is actually too low for a rat diet but if i pair it with millet which is high in both it helps even it out and they have different strengths in terms of micronutrients and so on so by offering a real variety you actually strengthen a mix um, it does need to be balanced with this selective eating thing and I actually find it helps in some ways. For instance, I offer two or three different flavoured kibbles in my mix. The one and only time I've had an issue with selective eating in my life, um, the rats actually went off a particular flavour of kibble. So this is one of the ways that I make sure that they still get that kibble level element because they have a choice and actually choices are really important. They're important to us and they're important to rats. They're part of um, feeling comfortable in themselves and kind of getting a bit of excitement too. So. What, when going back to my mix, um, like I say, two main parts. The first part is a mix of commercially available foods. Um, I do the mix because of the different weakness element. I also do the mix because it's a good way to 
add different flavours as well. Um, this is made up of what I would term close to rat suitable mixes. Um, that doesn't mean they're rat mixes. In fact, I think in my little pile of stuff for this, I only have one thing that's actually a rat diet and I, very, I do use a very small amount of that. This is things like um, decent rabbit mixes. Um, you can use some, some of the horse mixes. Um, like I think I've got con Dodson and Horrell's conditioning mix in my box of stuff. Um, I obviously use Harrison's Banana Brunch, which was a major element of my si simple mix because I find it a very good base food. And I'm, I've actually also got Science Selective here as well today, which is the one rat food. Um, there's some, I think there's a goat mix, pasture mix, that's quite good as well. So what you're looking at is for a mix that's around 12 to 14% protein-ish, um, so around 4 to 6% fat, and something that's low in alfalfa because rats don't digest that well. And the same goes with things like grass feed, wheat feed, straw feed. They're just names for kind of very grassy elements. Rats don't digest that brilliantly. So you want that quite low down in the mix. I don't like things that are too molasses, which basically is adding sweet. So you don't want too much sugar in that. Um, so that's kind of what I've, I've got in my collection. And so my mix is going to be half of this. Let's shuffle around a little bit. Problem with this there's far too many ingredients to add so it's going to be a little bit bulky with me popping in and out but i'll carry on talking while i'm doing it right so first element and major element is this mixture of stuff now my total mix is going to be 20 scoops of the kind of commercially commercial stuff plus a few bit little bits of extra in that section and then 20 scoops of my own homemade straight space mix which I'll get onto later that is following the principles of that simple mix that I did earlier but in this case um, I use it straight spaced as opposed to banana brunch base because actually half my mix does end up being like that and um, this is the way I like to think of it and how I work it out um, some people would just cut all the percentages in half but I don't like lots of small numbers. It doesn't really work very well with my brain. So again, I'm mixing by volume, so I'm using the scoop. So in this case, um, I'm gonna scoop, uh, do 20 different scoops of the commercial side of my mix, which will be predominantly um, banana brunch. So I'm gonna do half banana brunch. Then I've got some other stuff that I'll add in next. So that starts off with 10 scoops of banana brunch. So that's my half banana brunching. Um, one thing I should say, which I normally do on this, but I don't really want to waste the video's time, is I will pick out the majority of the banana chips. Again, these are quite high sugar. They're also high in phosphorus and potassium, which isn't so great for older rats. I've got a rat in my group at the moment that's got kidney issues, so I've got to be quite careful about that. But I'll do that afterwards, which is a bit slower, but will keep me busy. I don't pick out every single banana piece, but I pick out the majority of them, and that works quite well for me. So, banana brunch done, on to the next. Right, so next I've got a mixture of different rabbit's foods and horse mixes. I just kind of, when I see an interesting bag when I'm out and about that looks about right, I'll grab a bag. Um, like I say, Harrison's banana brunch is one of my favourites, so I use that most of the time. But then I will just go and if I see like, I think I think there's some probably Dr. Johnson or Mr. Johnson's um, Supreme in there. There is definitely um, Dodson and Horrell's conditioning mix. Um, what can be quite useful for this is because things like the um, conditioning mix come in massive bags. I get bits and bobs from rat rations because um, they split it down small for me. Or maybe a friend gets a massive bag. Um, I think one of my friends is going to get some goat mix shortly and I'll be trying a bit of that to buy, buy a bag off for, um, for a kilogram or two and I just mix all these things up into here um, and this is my kind of varied rabbit mix. Range is also good if you've got um, a range near you they quite often do some interesting things I think like Henry Bell's pea mix and there's a um, country apple mix that's not bad as well but just have a look around. Um, this is going to make up a fair bit of the rest of my mix. Um, so what I do for this is I have 
mostly the commercial mixes then i will add a little bit of barley rings to make up for the fact that this is very low in copper and fat um, and then i will add a little bit of seeds as well for to help boost up the fat a little bit further so i've added 10 of the banana brunch i'm going to add six of these and then there's one last ingredient before i add the other two bits and pieces gonna say you can see in this um there's actually quite a bit of kind of grassy stuff um it's pretty low in its ingredients amount but that's why i don't always favor it as much as the banana brunch which doesn't really have any alfalfa pellets there is also alfalfa pellets in this but overall it's quite low in the mixes i've picked um a little bit won't do them a lot any harm it's just kind of fiber it just goes through um, a lot can cause problems you don't want to throw the fiber in a diet too far out which is why we keep an eye on it but that gives us a nice mixture of rabbit foods, so get rid of this. Final thing is site selective. I don't always add this to my mixes, but it's not bad. Um, I don't like negative foods on their own, but I think they can have a place in a mix as long as they're not a massive component. Um, so for this one, I'm going to add two scoops of site selective. Um, you can see it's, it's the smallest amount by, uh, of all the kind of commercial mixes. But I don't want a load in it, it's pretty boring for the rats, but it's they also quite like it. Um, it's not a staple diet, I mean, you can just see it's dull. Um, but it's got quite a lot of different added vitamins and stuff, and nutritionally it's not that bad for rats. It's just a bit high in wheat, um, which is not also not good for the, guy, the girl I've got at the moment with kidney problems. But the rest of the food is fairly low in wheat, particularly the banana brunch, so that makes up for it. So next we'll get the, the little bits and pieces that I class as fixing um, this, which is adding some seeds and adding some barley rings. Um, barley rings I use for, this does not contain peanut butter stuff, um, barley rings I use for um, upping the copper and they contain a lot of linseed. So in my last mix I used um, conditioning pellets, oh what are they? They've got a silly name, I think conditioning cubes, that was it, um, and they're not cube shaped. There was an argument about this on Rat Care UK, it was quite amusing. Um, but yes, I, I prefer barley rings because the oil source is linseed, so it's higher in omega-3 than the conditioning cubes, but I was out of um, barley rings last time. So I'm going to use these and I'm going to put a full scoop in. I've already broken these up because um, it makes them kind of fill out a little bit more and the rats are not going to eat a whole barley ring at once. It's actually okay to leave them whole. I'm a bit weird. I don't, I quite enjoy doing it. Stick the barley rings in a bag with a hammer and just hit them on the floor. It's very therapeutic, but you don't really have to do it unless you um, really want to. Um, so I'm just going to add a bit of scoop of these and that'll make a big difference. Right, so barley rings added and then the last bit to make this half of my mix complete is to add another a scoop of seeds. So I have various different types of seeds that I add to my mix. This is my staple one. It's very, it's basically very similar to the um, rat rations mix that they sell, which is kind of linseed, hemp, hemp fennel, etc. Pumpkin seeds. But I've added a few of those these myself as well. Um, there's also bits of garlic in there, which doesn't come in the rat rations mix, but it just seemed an appropriate place to put it. Um, the key thing in here is keep them high omega-3 seeds. So linseed and hemp and pumpkin are three of your best. Um, if you're going to use a seed, a seed mix, keep it low on the sunflower and niger seeds. You can see there's like a couple in here, <laughs> but there's very few. Coconut also is quite a good one for, for them that can be added into there. Um, you can get bir bird seed mixes. You can get... Um, use human seeds if you're not using very much. Um, I, my local pet shop sells linseed and hemp seed in bulk and then I just get some li some um, other bits and pieces and mix it all together in a bag. Saves me a little bit of time on the mixing. Right, so that's it. So this half of my mix is technically in its own right a complete mix. So I just mix it up so you can have a look. So you can see in its own right, I'll bring a scoop for you, for you. this is fairly an in, fairly interesting mix, there's a fair bit of variety in there, it's roughly complete, um, I might um, 
if I was just feeding this, I'd probably right now add a bit more seed and a bit more um, barley rings because it's winter and my rat room is currently 14 degrees C. The rats don't care, but they do need a little bit of extra kind of calories at this, this stage. But because I'm going to make the rest of the mix, I'll do the adjustments at the end. Um, but yes, this is a kind of alternative that you could do for your whole mix. Um, what I do next adds more variety. The advantage of this kind of commercial based mix is you don't need to supplement it. Much like the simple mix that I did before, this is basically complete. Um, there might be a few bits and pieces that are a little bit low, but you'll pick that up from the rat's condition. Um, so it's worth bearing that one in mind. And you can mess around with this and make it more exciting as you want to. So that's half my mix. My next half is what I would call a straight space shunamite. So the previous simple mix that I did was a commercial based shunamite. So that used a commercial mix, which is banana brunch in that case, um, and added stuff to it. A straight space use what we call straight grains, which are grains that haven't had much done to them. Um, we're talking about, get a handful, if you can see them. So kind of barley, um, buckwheat, millet, etc. Um, they are minimally processed, they are in the natural state, the kind of state that rats in the wild would eat them. If they're in the husk, even better, because it's even more enrichment for them. Um, your typical rat rations mix, the not the isomix, the other ones, um, they are straight spaced, so you'll notice a lot of similarities in that. Um, so what do I do for a straight space mixed? Um, a straight space mix, and you can see on there, it's this bottom part here. So half my overall mix, but it's made up of 50% base. So the base in this case is your minimally processed grains, your straights. And then you've got your 25% um, processed stuff, which is your breakfast cereal, similar to last time. Um, you've got your 10% protein, again, similar to last time, but I'm going to add a bit more variety into this time. Um, that bit when you find an alfalfa pellet down your sleeve. Um, then it's going to have your 10% dried herbs and your seeds. So it's very similar in format. The only difference is I use a different base. But because I'm using the straight grains, they don't already have the vitamins sprayed on them like commercial mixes generally do. So that means I will need to supplement and I'll explain a little bit about that right at the end. So straights. What do I have in my straights? Um, so again, I've got a mix that is um, it's going to be 20 scoops because it's half and half with that one. So I'm going to say each scoop equals 5%. Um, so with that, my base is going to be 50%. So I'm going to need 10 scoops of the straights. Um, I can mix with them how I want to mix them. Um, and I've got a, a box which is full of my straight stuff at the, at the moment. Um, so first ingredient is this. This is um, a mix that I've made up myself of all the kind of straight grains and such. I did this because it makes it a lot faster for me to mix the stuff. And I got it in roughly the kind of orders that I want. So in there we've got paddy rice, which is um, basically rice in its shell, or in its husk as they call it. I've got buckwheat, which is little um, kind of dark brown triangle things. That's also in its husk. There is barley. Um, sorry, try and picking it out here. Um, and we have some oats and we've got millet and dairy. Um, trying to think what else I have in here. Um, I think we've got some whole wheat as well. One thing that I make sure I do, so you mentioned I talked about my kidney, um, kind of my girl with the kidney problems. Um, any older rat, you need to be quite respectful of the kidneys. In fact, I generally make a kidney friendly mix through the whole life. So you need to pick what we call low phosphorus grains. And they are typically rice, barley, um, they're the main ones. Corn's actually pretty good. And then your things like oats and wheat and rye and so on, they're quite high in phosphorus. So when I make up my straight grain mix, oh, I should say we also have corn, um, what I do is I focus on my, my biggest by volume and I normally get a couple of kilograms of um, paddy rice and um, whole barley. And I sometimes add a bit of flakes barley and such as well. In fact, we'll get onto that later. I've got a few bags. Um, so this then becomes fairly kidney friendly in its own right. The, the kind of wheat and oats is quite a small amount, as is the buckwheat. Millet is pretty, one of those neutral grains where it's about 11% protein, about I think it's like 5 or 6% fat, which means I can add a bit of that and it's not really going to change the overall mix. Um, but it's not a, it's not like a major constituent because I actually want my straight gain, grains to lower the rest of the mix's protein because I'll add more protein relatively. Um, hopefully that makes some sense. But yes, so this is my mix of straight grains. 
out of the 10 scoops I'm going to do, um, this is going to make up, what shall I do, seven of them, and that gives me a little room, make it six actually, because I've got a couple things I want to add. It's not rock like a rocket science, you don't have to get precisely right, um, as long as there, nothing's going to throw out the work by being incredibly low in everything or incredibly high in everything, and you're keeping in mind the, ph the phosphorus kind of contents or the kidney-friendly grains, then you can play around a little bit with this and find out what works for you, but keep variety in there, variety is key, and make sure barley and rice is in there generally as a, as a rule of thumb. So, six of these scoops. This weird feeling that I might have actually miscounted and that was seven but it's it's close enough so lovely grains they're really nice to feel um, next thing that I add in this um, base mix so in the straights base mix is this so this is um, mixed flakes it's sold as a straights feed for um, kind of various animals I suppose small holders that kind of thing um, it's really useful in mixing up your own food I'm going to add um, two of these, because it's quite a nice one. This is actually, um, it's peas, barley and flaked corn I think, so all of these have been micronized, which is basically squished under heat. Um, so it's also a very good way of dealing with corn. If, you've, if you're in America you may have heard, or you've listened to a lot of American stuff, that corn is, um, I think the only one to do, oh no, let me do three. Um, corn is dangerous and they, they can have mould spores and such but actually in the UK the way we dry our corn is different and actually even in the US if you're getting micronized corn because of the way it's, it's dried it's safe so I don't worry too much about the whole corn in my kind of straights mix and because in the UK it's fine but if it was in America I'd probably only add micronized corn just from the safety factor you might have find some whole corn that's safe but you do have to be a little bit careful so we've got a couple of scoops of that in there, so I've got um, another few scoops left. So what have I got in my box? So most things I add are um, already in my kind of big straight mix, but I, I do like to add a little bit of extra millet. And I've got some plain white rice in. It, it can go in here quite comfortably. Um, it's not a bad thing. Again, white white rice is actually better than paddy rice if you've got kidney issues. Um, so I just top it up with that as well. Um, a bit of variety. It's a different flavour and texture to the paddy rice, um, but similar in principle. And then one, what I'm going to just add for for a bit of variety, partly because it's it's fairly neutral in the mix is some millet sprigs. Um, so I'm not going to add them whole like this, but it's a different texture. So we've, we've put in the kind of like loose millet, which is lovely and interesting. And then the millet sprigs, um, when you strip them off the thing, come up in little kind of rat sized balls and they love them. <laughs> and it's just a little bit of texture. Um, it's quick and easy for me to do, but the amount I'm adding by weight and volume is nothing. So it doesn't matter that it's not within my count. Um, you kind of get a feel for what you can add without really tweaking your mix. So we've got a nice mixture of stuff going on in here now. Um, that is all my straight spaced stuff. So the base of my mix is in there. We've got another 10 scoops to go and that's going to be split up amongst the interesting stuff. So the next section, we've done our base mix. We're on to our um, low sugar cereals and such. Um, I, I sometimes call them processed grains um, as another phrase because that opens things up to a bit more variety. So. There is 25% of this, that means it's five scoops using my 5% um, per scoop rule. And I can do a variety of that. So I'm going to lay out some of the bits that I can use for this just so you can see them. Um, as well as, you'll probably recognise this bag from when I did my simple mix. It's a mixture of low sugar cereals. So we've got our Rice Krispies, our... Um, own brand shredded wheat bite sized type things and cornflakes in there so i'll use that we've also got some high fiber cereal cakes again they're processed um quite interesting 
a little bit of pasta. I think these are corn. Yes, corn and chia, chia seed things. This is something I got for myself and then um, didn't like that much. They're no sugar in them or anything, no salt, so they're really good for the rats. So they'll be joining the party too. And then we've got a little bit of um, different kind of pastry stuff. It's, it's noodley, but it's effectively like short spaghetti. So the bulk of it is going to still be my um, cereals. That's because they are nice and low in um, kind of phosphorus. I've picked them on purpose. Some of the other things like the wheat, the wheat pasta is a little bit higher in phosphorus. I don't want to use too much in the mix because of monster and the kidneys. So I've got five of these. So I'm going to make three of my cereal mix and then we'll use, have a look at the rest and see, see what I want to do. I should say, this is quite an iterative thing. I'll put something in and then I'll have a think and then I might add something different. Um, I've been making mixes now for 12 years. <laughs> um, if you don't count when I was a kid, when we used to make food from um, a mixture of um, a rabbit muesli and some parrot food, which is not five leagues away from this, but since I've probably been getting into this, I've been making you kind of Shunamite style mixes for that long. So I can kind of like look at it and see when it needs a little bit more of something, um, you'll get there. But if you start off by just kind of following rough, rough guidelines and then I'll do a video at some point on condition and probably various elements of condition and that will help giving you a little bit of feedback. So cereals are in. We're now gonna add some more of this and I'll see how much space this takes up in my scoop. I don't want to add loads of this stuff. Um, but the palm stuff is quite nice. They're also quite bulky but lightweight, so actually overall by weight this is quite a small amount. I'll probably also end up looking out for big chunks of my mix and breaking it up a bit more because otherwise they'll just fight over it. The other thing you can add in this section, if you just wanted to make a straight based mix up, not including the commercial mix, then you could um, add a bit of barley rings in here, it's not a bad thing. I sometimes do. In fact I might do that actually, I might add a bit more barley rings. Um, I probably end up adding a little bit more at the end or more seeds at the end, just because of my kind of cold weather I mentioned before. But let's add some of the pasta. I really like the tiny pasta shells, they're like perfect rat size. Um, they are probably overpriced really to use on the wraps but I don't use very much so it's cute. <laughs> um, they do enjoy the kind of twirly things and pretty much any pasta shape so it doesn't matter. So I did a bit of that, let's have a little bit more. Burning. So we have our five different um, scoops of processed grains and cereals and such so that's out of the way and done. Right so next on our list we're on to the 10% protein. So in the previous mix I just used one dog kibble. This time I have two different dog kibbles and various other stuff which is in my London bus of protein apparently. So the reason I used two I mentioned before is because um, I've had rats that have chosen not to eat certain things. Um, one of mine didn't like fish, and um, that's why I keep in something that's chicken and rice or similar. I go for the small bite stuff. I don't add, add loads overall in my mix, so some of this is a little high, higher protein, but try and keep it around about 25% or less in terms of protein. Um, it's also a great way of adding copper to your mix. So I'm going to add half and half of this and then see what's in here and add bits and pieces of that to make up my other scoop. So it's 10%, therefore I need two scoops. added. Kibble's actually one that I sometimes come in and add a little bit later because you kind of get a feel from the mix as well so if it's looking a little bit low um, I will see how I go on that. So what else can you add to protein? Um, I, what we have here, these are various sea bugs and I think actually these are all shrimps. I sometimes add a mixture of um, sea bugs as well which has got tube effects and different kinds of shrimp and bloodworm and such. And these are river shrimps, are they? Freshwater shrimps. Um, Great protein to fat ratio, um, very lightweight, um, the rats do quite like them, so I'm going to add a bit of that. And then the other major thing that I add is soy flakes. Um, 
soy flakes are a very kidney kind protein um, so I quite like adding a bit of that as well um, your egg, fish um, and soya are your three most kidney kind proteins which is why actually my mix features this heavily um, I had alfalfa pellets in my sleeve earlier I now have kibble in my sleeve <laughs> it's quite exciting this uh, rat mixing that so that's my protein element in there chuck that out of the way um, next done protein we're on to herb, dried herbs and veg so what have I got to use for this oh I should have actually something I forgot about in terms of protein stuff one thing you can add as well I'll stand up a little bit so you can see that better um, this is a mixture of lentils and split peas um, the kind of things that you'd find in a, an Indian supermarket just throw that in there, it won't make a big difference um, that is also quite a useful protein sauce I would not use it on its own because it's not a complete protein um, but it's quite good, you just can't use dried beans um, the lentils and peas are fine dried, they don't contain a lot of anti-nutrients but you do need to be careful um, mung beans, interestingly, despite being called beans, are actually also okay but you're better off with your lentils and split peas if you're a little bit um, kind of concerned about it. So I sometimes add those. I forgot. I didn't notice them in the box. Otherwise, I'd add some this time. I might add some a little bit later if I, I feel the mix needs it. So on to herbs and dried veg. So these are some of the ingredients that I currently have in for herbs and dried veg. So I've got 10%, so I've got two scoops to play with. I'm not going to put loads of each, but I'll go through kind of some of the things that I've got in here. So this is a dried herb mix that um, somebody bought a massive bag of. It's, it's sold for horses. Um, it's lovely. It smells really minty. Um, so I bought a little bit off them, which is part of what I'll add to my mix. I tend to try and do about one scoop of herbs and one scoop of veg, but it really depends what I've got in at the time. Right, so then we have some nettle leaves. Um, they're quite good, they're a little bit diuretic, which is not bad considering my girl and her kidney issues that help her push through. Um, very rich in minerals and such. Um, I do quite like ne dried nettle. Um, needless to say, it doesn't sting when it's dried. You could dry your own if you felt like harvesting them. In fact, um, let me get on to this bag. This is a mixture of various kind of mixed herbs and these are kind of Chinese mixed herbs and in some cases, um, I can't remember exactly what that was, but it was, it was from a kind of Chinese veg pack that, pack that was really interesting. Um, you will also find that I forget sometimes what I've stirred, stirred up in this. I'll find something that's interesting. Um, and start amalgamating a bag full of it and then I'll put a handful in the mix until that runs out and then I'll create some more bags and so on. Um, so this was a mixture of different herbs and stuff, some of which I dried myself, some of which I got from various kind of wholesalers and other people and such. Um, well I'll also add in the herbs section, so this is tortoise flowers. It's the rats seem to quite like them. I don't know that they add loads nutritionally, um, but they like the flavour and the textures and they go down quite well. And I'm sure they offer different things to the herbs that I use. So um, add a little bit of that. So we've got a nice kind of range of herby stuff in there. Um, and then in terms of the dried veg, I use a little bit of, you recognise this from last time, my Herb Plus mix. Um, because again, I love it. It's added to most mixes. There's some dry veg in there, which is why it kind of like falls somewhere between. And then this bag is made up of loads of veg that, in some cases, I've even grown my own myself. But it's a mixture of stuff I've dried myself and stuff that I've bought from rat rations. Um, it's a really nice mix. I'll put some in here so and show it you a bit more clear. Um, it features things like dried tomatoes, dried cabbage. Um, dried kale, I think dried green beans, which are the kind of green beans that you can eat raw. Um, I wouldn't do it to any beans. Those kind of like stick like beans that are squeaky, you used to call them squeaky beans. Um, you can even recognise a little bit of curly kale there. So basically if your rats don't eat the full bag of curly kale, stick it in a dehydrator or on a windowsill to dry out and you've got yourself your next meal. Um, 
I think there's also like leek and carrot, red pepper, basically all sorts. I get a different mix each time and it's a really good to add, way to add flavour and variety to a mix. Um, and again, much like before, before, I make myself up a little bag and add different flavours to it as I go along. And then as I run out of one bag, I start a new bag. So I'll probably have about three different flavour bags on the go at any one time. And it, it helps me have the variety without kind of just always adding the same variety because I also quite like shopping for rat food. But anyway, so we now have a good mix of uh, herbs in there. So my final thing I'm going to add is seeds. So this is like the second component, but this is the only the seed component for this final mix. Um, it's 5%, so I'm looking at one scoop. So for this one, I'm going to pick different seeds than I mixed last time. Now this is um, a lovely seed mix that one of my friends got a massive bag of. It smells divine. It smells of fennel, which I actually really like fennel. Um, there's slightly different seeds than in last time. There's still some overlap. I mean, there's still some millety bits and there's still some linseed and such in there, but it's a slightly different variety. Um, and again, with the strong fennel smell, it's just lovely. So I'm going to add a fair bit of that. And then these are great for rats. So these are little pine nuts. Um, they're a little bit challenging for rats to get out because they've got a thick shell compared to the rest of the seeds. Um, so they're quite nice to add to a mix. Um, so I'll stick that in. That bit where you miss a whole bag of kind of dried stuff that you dried recently and you forgot about. Even including strawberries. Um, I might add a handful of that later because it's not much by um, weight. So that's my seed um, added to there. So we've got the bottom half, which is the commercial based mix um, and the top half, which is the straight space mix. So why do I add the commercial mix when the straight space mix is much more varied and interesting? Um, that's because the commercial mix is slightly more processed. And I find particularly with keeping my rats in quite cool conditions um, a little bit more processed food um, helps them keep condition better. So by condition, I mean they look glossy, shiny, great health and that kind of thing. Um, it also helps reduce the amount of supplements that I need to feed. So if, if I felt solely the um, straight space mix, I would have to um, give supplements about every like two to three times a week for your typical adult rat. Um, when I mix it with a commercial mix, 50-50, because then my commercial mix... Um, doesn't need supplementing. I have the amount of time that I need to su supplement them, which is good because I'm forgetful um, and technically it also saves money, but that isn't really my driver. I'm just forgetful. Um, so let's give this a good mix. Um, I should say the reason I mix this in a cage base is because it's so like low and wide, it makes it much easier to mix it. If I'm mixing, mixing deep, I end up kind of like having to stick my hands right down and it never mixes particularly well. All the small stuff falls to the um, bottom. It's never going to be a perfect mix um, because to do that, I probably need a cement mixer or some commercial mixing equipment, um, which I think rat rations have actually been talking to them. But it gives it a good feel. So let's have a look at that. So here's a bit of a scoop of my mix. Um, you can see it's quite varied. We've got a lot more in different ingredients, varieties and textures than just the commercial mix alone. Um, and it's made what's quite an interesting mix. Actually, each scoop will be slightly different. So get another one and that's a different scoop and so on. So each day the, the mix of their diet will be ever so slightly different. And, and that's quite nice for them. It's a bit like us. Rats do not need to eat the exact nutritional requirements every single day. What they need is to eat the, the nutritional requirements over a period of time. Around about a week isn't a bad thing. So if each mix is just slightly different, but overall is still complete, then that's actually better for them because um, it doesn't just kind of satisfy their nutritional needs. It satisfies their intellectual and kind of enrichment needs too. So we have a nice mix now. Um, I think I mentioned before about... Um, that I need to boost it a little bit because it's cold in my rat room. Um, this is one of the real powers of doing your own mix. So I know full well my rats need a little bit more. Actually, I can start seeing it in the coat condition. Whilst they're still in very good coat condition, they're not the usual shiny, glossy. Uh, mine normally look like they're almost kind of wet, they're that shiny, and they're just not quite there. 
Um, I get somebody out, but they don't come pouring out because there's food being mixed and they're hungry. Um, but I'll do a bit of a kind of video on that at some other point. Um, so I know they do need a little bit more at this stage. Um, so what I'm going to do is add in some more seeds. And this is very much by, like, we, we've gone beyond the kind of standard recipe now. This is me adding something in because I think they need it. And so it's done by kind of gut feel. And I will say successful feeding is part science, which is get the mix right, get the nutrition right. And then part is the art. And the art is where you apply kind of almost experimentation to find out what the rats exactly need. Um, I'll add this this time. If for some reason my rats start looking a bit greasy or something like that, then I'll actually probably add a bit more straights to this and kind of even it out a little bit. But I've been doing this for enough years now that I have a good idea um, what they need and what will be fine. So I'm going to add probably... I'll add a scoop, give it, give it a stir and then see. So this is another different seed mix that I've got. I, I accumulate lots and lots of rat crap and that includes food. Um, and it's a bit high in sunflower seeds and such for me, because it, but because it's not going to be a major component. Um, I'll mix that in and just have a bit of a look. Um, I might add a little bit more of the barley rings. Um, barley rings are good because they're high fat. And they're fairly processed, which does, does add a, help a little bit. So you can see at this stage, it's no longer the measuring out. This is the kind of gut feel of MC. Hmm, I don't know what I'll add. Right, so I've also got some coconut pieces. Um, that would be great. The kind of fat that you get in coconut is really good um, for winter not yet been opened so let's put a bit of that in and then that should probably do me I think that'll probably be enough for now I can always add more later if I feel like I need it what I pr probably will do in slower time is I will chop these up a little bit or break them up as I kind of mix it just because they really don't need that big sticks and it will cause war in my cage, which is quite good exercise, um, but probably not for the kind of good for, the, for some of the rats that are lower ranking and end up getting chased every time they get everything, anything. Um, but yes, yeah, so with that mixed in and me going through and probably removing a few of the um, banana chips, that is quite a good mix for me and I'm quite happy with that. So I will be putting that in a certain amount of them in my standard box, which I keep um, in a cupboard. Um, and the rest I will bag up and seal and stick in my, cu my cupboard for when I run out of food next. Um, so hopefully that was useful. Hopefully you can see the ways that you can mess around with your mix. Like I say, you don't have to go to as many options as me. Um, you can just go to kind of maybe try one or two different things each time. Um, but it's very much about experimentation and it's about trying to make it work for your rats. There is not one right answer. Um, keep the ingredients healthy and sensible. So don't go adding, um, I've seen somebody adding crisps to a mix. That is not good. Um, don't go adding high salt, high, high fat, high sugar items, but feel free to add kind of a bit of variety. Um, try and add, let's say two or three things per section and maybe make it so that half of those um, you don't add next time you add something else instead and make it varied and make it interesting for yourself as well um, one of my kind of favorite relaxing pastimes is wandering around pet feed shops with my friend um, because we quite like looking at the packets i doubt anybody will quite get to that stage it's probably a little bit sad but i do enjoy it as a hobby and it's um it's quite a nice way to enrich my rats lives so i hope you have the chance to give it a go yourself um, maybe start with a simple mix and then start adding things or maybe do a half and half mix and i should say this half and half mix is very much what the rat rations is a mix is based on um because it was kind of i started sharing the idea with people just using one of the rat ration straights mixed instead and it took off so um, if you don't feel up to doing it yourself you could always try one of those mixes um, I'd also recommend if you really want to get into it, um, I mentioned it on the Simple Mix page, but I'll mention it again, the Scuttle & Gourmet, because that goes through a lot of the ingredients and what the strengths and the weaknesses are of them. Um, and I find, found that very useful when I was kind of starting out and, and learning what to look for myself. But give it a go and enjoy yourself and hopefully the rats will enjoy it too. So over and out and please share kind of your experience of making your mixes yourself. Bye for now.